Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Mark Gazdick and I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Hawk. I'm based in Kent and I've lived on the Puget Sound for over 35 years. We all know how fragile Puget Sound is and we know how proactive we need to be for future generations to be able to have the same opportunities that we've had. Anyone that's ever visited Puget Sound knows how important it is to our region. Those of you who live here, me personally, more than 35 years, know that this area's past, present, and future is tightly tied to the beauty and benefits that Puget Sound has to offer. Recently on Mother's Day, I gathered with three generations of my family to relax and play on a dry patch of sand at low tide on the Sound. I want the youngest of the generations to enjoy the Sound like I've had that opportunity to do. I'm glad I have an opportunity to do my part. So here are a few highlights, facts, and benefits associated with the economy, recreation, and wildlife at, the Pu at Puget Sound. Washington State shellfish aquaculture is an important piece of our heritage and culture, and it contributes about $270 million to the annual economy and over 2,700 jobs. And in one survey, respondents said they took an average of 2.65 trips with recreation as a primary purpose in the last year which corresponds to 8.8 .8 million trips per year among the study population. The study estimated that, this, that the population's total annual coastal visitation trip expenditures were approximately $475 million. Wildlife, the near shore environment, environment of Puget Sound provides habitat for over 211 fish species, 100 species of seabirds, and 13 mammals. We all know all the challenges that we face. In total, there's 87 sewage treatment plants that are releasing about 38 tons of dissolved inorganic nitrogen into Puget Sound. Washington Department of Ecology has identified water quality violations related to low oxygen in 143 designated areas in 39 bays, inlets, and open water sectors throughout Puget Sound. These localized areas and bays and inlets are designated as impaired water bodies. Obviously, there's all kinds of other pollutants like runoffs. Uh, on average, there's 52 to 66,000 pounds of pollutants from stormwater that are released into the Puget Sound uh, ecosystem every, every day. We know that it's causing major algae blooms, fish and wildlife die-offs, contaminated shellfish beds. We've lost approximately 30% of Puget Sound's shellfish growing areas uh, due to uh, these issues. We know that saving Puget Sound is on the minds of those we serve. 86% of Puget Sound residents think that restoring Puget Sound is a good use of tax dollars. So let's talk about the Puget Sound Nutrient Reduction Project, which is nothing new to all of you. You know, it started in 2018, and as recent as January of this year, Department of Ecology announced the decision to move forward with developing a draft nutrients general permit the proposed nutrients general permit would apply to the majority of the plants discharging into the marine and estuarine waters of Puget Sound. The primary focus will be on excess nitrogen. While not announced yet, we're hearing that the estimated implementation of permit change changes will begin in 2022. So how are you preparing? What more have you heard from the Department of Ecology? Is your facility capable of removing nutrients? Now I'd like to turn it over to one of our process management experts, Paul Schuett. Hello, I'm Paul Schuett, Claro's process manager for the West. I'm assisting Mark in designing nutrient removal systems for customers in, in, the, in the Western states of the United States and North America. Hawk is a, is a unique leader and innovator in water analysis and process control solutions. In the Claro's group, we have over 27 software solutions coupled with our instrumentation kits and chemistries in over 2,600 sites in North America and Europe. We've met with and will continue to communicate with the Washington State Department of Ecology, ensuring they are familiar with our efforts and that we are aligned with their objectives. In fact, the DOE has regularly referenced efforts in the Chesapeake Bay as an example of successful nutrient reduction. Hawk was directly involved in those efforts helping plans achieve compliance, both with laboratory methods and online analyzers designed for wastewater applications. We also helped in the Long Island Sound, specifically with Stanford WPCA, when Connecticut began a nitrogen credit trading program in 2002 
we helped Stanford earn several million dollars of credits by using online analyzers to optimize their process. So how can we help you? In a lot of ways. But today we want to focus specifically on two primary areas where we envision a partnership being very beneficial. First, we can help during the planning phase. As you get ready for a new permit requirements to come on board, one of the benefits of our solution, which we'll discuss more later, is that it allows you to collect continuous real-time data for your process. This data can be used to help create a digital twin for your facility. By digital twin, we mean a virtual replica of your facility and process. With this virtual twin, the system can simulate operational scenarios in real time to show how they impact processes, treatment plant capacity, and water quality output in the real world. Your team can then use that digital twin to make critical decisions. Decisions like, do we need to expand our capacity? Or if we optimize our process, can we actually meet the new requirements without expansion? How great would it be to have solid data to support that big decision? Second, we can help with ongoing monitoring and management of your plant's nutrient management processes, helping ensure your facility safely meets the new regulations and does so in the most efficient manner possible, saving time and resources. We'll talk more about that in a minute. To start diving deeper, let me first give you a high level overview of our suite of solutions. We call it Claros, the water intelligence system from Hawk. Claros is an ecosystem of solutions that combines connected instrumentation, sensors, meters, and controllers with powerful software to help our customers with more efficient data collection, aggregation, visualization, and more, most importantly, implementation. The result is lower risk of compliance violations and far greater efficiency in your water treatment processes. And while the entire Claros platform is categorized as a system, there are multiple solutions within three key functionality areas shown here. First of all, instrument management, which helps ensure instruments are maintained properly to always provide accurate data. It also helps provide 24 seven access to that data from anywhere. Next one is data management, which helps aggregate data from all your many sources, lab, process, field, etc., and allows you to easily use that data for analysis. It also greatly simplifies your regulatory reporting processes. And last but not least, process management, which takes all of this great data and uses it to actually help you manage your facility. It does this by either empowering your team with smart recommendations that they can implement themselves or by actually automating certain functionalities. While the entire Claro system is relevant to ensuring you can meet these new upcoming regulations, the most critical element is process management. Our process management solution is where the rubber meets the road, where the data is directly used to manage your treatment process in a real time dynamic fashion. Let's go deeper into Claro's process management. Using instrumentation and chemistries and software, Hawk has put together a unique system that allows you to shift duties from mundane sampling and, and lab tests that are only as good at, as the moment they're taken to having real time 24 seven sampling and results at your fingertips. This allows you to make better decisions, gives you much more efficient operations allows you to get more out of your plant and stabilize your process with a great degree of predictability, reducing risk, complying with new regulations, and reducing energy while doing so. Hawk does this by collecting real-time data. Our suite of instrumentation is world-renowned and is the top of the line in the instrumentation world. In addition to the instruments, we have a support team and service team that make sure your instruments are in top shape continually calibrated, maintained, giving you accurate readings at all times. Throughout the day, our system measures, calculates dynamic set points, and gives you the option to implement those set points or allow the system to implement those set points. You can use it in modeling mode or control mode to let your plant run at its best. I'd like to show you a 30 second video 
that shows how the Hawk system works. The automation, the data collection, and the set point generation is all being done in the background very accurately and precisely. With Claro's process management, sensors are continuously monitoring and evaluating your water, providing far more real-time data than manual grab samples ever could. Then, using those evaluations, dynamic set points are calculated and treatment is adjusted with only the precise chemical dosage required and blowers active only when necessary, minimizing energy usage. We understand every plant is different. Our systems are designed to adapt to your facility structure and, and makeup. We have systems designed to help remove BOD and COD, nitrification, denitrification, phosphate removal, disinfection, dechlorination, solids handling. We handle solids, thickening, dewatering. We have a system called the SRT module that automates your wasting and stabilizes your SRT process. It's really the foundation of successful process control. Having successful process control and, and, S and a stable SRT allows your nitrification and denitrification process to prosper, be predictable and reliable, helps you avoid overwasting, helps you get the results you're looking for, creates an environment where your nitrifiers and denitrifiers are doing the best work they can do. I'd like to introduce Andy Logan to take a little bit deeper dive into how that process works. Hello, I'm Andy Logan. I'm Claro's process manager for the Rocky Mountain West and I support both Paul and Mark. Um, I've spent the bulk of my career in, in wastewater process and I've been with Hawk for a couple of years now. Paul um, provided the introduction to some of our control modules. One of those is the solids retention timer SRT module. And here's an example of a, of a layout of SRT. And something to emphasize here is that um, this is just a, a representative layout. The, the layouts are highly configurable. We can lay them out to match your individual facility. But what we can see here is that the, the system is going to measure dissolved oxygen in the basin so that we know the aeration volume. It's also able to account for changing volumes, for example, with a swing zone or in other configurations of wastewater treatment, such as an oxidation ditch. It's also going to include temperature in the total suspended solids measurements from the basin in order to calculate an idealized wasting rate. So the waste activated sludge rate there. And then that information is going to feed into an industrial process computer called an RTC and then continuously modulate that that wasting rate. And what this allows the, the utility to do is to have an optimal SRT based on that temperature. It can be in a very precise SRT based on a calendar input function that the, the operators can input manually, and it's always going to maintain that. So if you have widely fluctuating flows or loads or temperature swings, then you can account for that in your SRT calculation, and the, the controller will, will take care of that for you. Okay, so one of the best references we can have is, is from the field. So we're going to play a short clip from Dustin Valaket, the chief plan op, uh, operator for the city of Manteca, California. Briefly, they've got a roughly a 10 MGD facility with an MLE process for nitrification and denitrification. And they really wanted to address some issues related to foaming and polymer overdosing and inaccurate and inconsistent SRT calculation inside of their plant. So we'll let Dustin speak. Hello, my name is Dustin Valaket. I'm the chief plant operator at City of Manteca. We are a 9.875 MGD plant. We currently are at 6.7 dry weather capacity. We have primary treatment, activated sludge, secondary clarification, and tertiary treatment. We also have UV disinfection. Prior to the SRT, we were collecting data and WIMS and trending. We had several forms, AM and PM shifts and we were able to trend what data we were able to gather from the DAFT unit and from the RAS, um, but it was inadequate just because there wasn't any type of online continuous measurement. So our RAS pumps are oversized, so at nighttime, the turn down, we just can't turn them down enough. And what happens is, is the mixed liquor or the RAS concentration drops off, and this was causing issues in the DAF because of underloading, they started getting foam. Um, we were looking to try to fix that problem. 
So after we identified the problem, we had an idea of maybe programming SCADA to be able to control the mixed liquor, to control our wasting. Um, that's when we found out about a module. We reached out to our Hawk rep um, and we found out they had a auto SRT basically. It'll control the wasting and the thought process behind it was if we could have a consistent amount of pounds going to the DAF, then the foaming problem would stop. So we reached out to Hawk, we ordered the auto SRT, and then we installed it. It's pretty seamless, just it took a day. Uh, however, what we did is we went through a verification phase. So for a period of three weeks, we monitored what the set point that they recommended wasting versus what we were currently wasting. And we got trends that were sent to us and emails showing how much we're under wasting or over wasting for that day. As chief plan operator, this uh, auto SRT has been amazing in the aspect that I don't have to monitor the SRT besides just supervising the actual unit. It's, we can trust what it's doing and we can monitor verification off of our lab analytical data and it's been less stress for me to be able to not spend all that time looking at all the tests, spending hours trying to figure out which direction we should go with wasting, but now we know what direction we need to go. From my experience from beginning to end, uh, Hawk has been very supportive. Been there in the evenings, nights. Uh, sales rep has been there when I've had issues at eight, nine o'clock at night. He typically always answers his phone. He's answered on vacation, um, but as a whole, Hawk has been there to make sure that we're getting what we need out of whatever we're asking them to do. Okay, so before I move on to nitrification, um, the reason why we focused on SRT first is because it enables the utility to have a tremendous amount of control over their process. Um, you heard some of those benefits from Dustin, his satisfaction with the system, and the fact that he now has that aspect of his treatment um, process under control he can divert his attention, his operator's attention elsewhere. Moving into the nitrification module, this is an advanced control system, also known in the industry as ammonia-based aeration control. Again, just a standard configuration, and we can adapt the particulars of that configuration to your facility. So the way that this control system works is that it's gonna measure the flow and the ammonia concentration into a, a treatment process. It also is going to be continuously measuring the total suspended solids um, within the aeration process as well as the temperature, and then tying this back to create an O2 set point. The way that it's doing this is it's using the activated sludge model to um, measure directly the, the decay of the ammonia across the system. So now we see it leaving the process. It sees the decay of ammonia and therefore the creation of nitrate. Um, and from that, in the total suspended solids measurement, it's able to back calculate a percent nitrifiers within the system. And this value allows the process controller to calculate the maximum possible nitrification rate as well as the needed nitrification rate. And the needed nitrification rate is what you, the operator, sets as your target concentration. So Really, for the first time in wastewater process history, you're able to specify an exact effluent concentration for ammonia, and that um, ammonia-based aeration controller for nitrification will continuously modulate the blowers to um, achieve that concentration leaving the basin. You won't get more DO than you need, and you won't get less. You save energy. We often see 20 to 50% energy savings in these types of systems and um, increase compliance, less headache, and you'll sleep a lot better. Similarly, with the denitrification module, it can be easily tied into a, a nitrification module so that you have a nitrification and denitrification process. It can be a standalone. Um, again, lots of configurations that are possible. But this is going to look at the nitrate value leaving your denitrification zone or your anoxic zone. It's going to um, achieve a target concentration by increasing or decreasing the internal recirculation. Um, and this will allow more or less residence time of the nitrate under anoxic conditions in the presence of carbon to give you the denitrification that you're looking for so that you can meet a nitrate or a TIN limit. Um, 
The module also has the capability of feeding an external carbon source if it's a if it's a carbon poor process to um, make sure that that component isn't limiting the denitrification that you're trying to achieve. Similarly, it can be tied into the intake point DO concentration for that MLR pump or that internal recirculation pump so that it can um, modulate the dissolved oxygen concentration at that point so you don't get dissolved oxygen carryover back into your anoxic and therefore lose denitrification. So this module gives you the ability to precisely control your nitrate levels, leaving your plant, and also maximize the denitrification capacity of your anoxic zone. You'll reduce energy um, requirements for your MLR pump um, and achieve your compliance values much more easily. So one further module, which is really an incorporation of both denitrification and nitrification, is what we call the simultaneous nitrification and denitrification module. This module is applicable to CSTR or continuously stirred tank reactors or oxidation ditches, for example, um, processes where nitrification and denitrification is occurring in the same volume. The way that these plants are instrumented for this process management solution is we're measuring ammonia and nitrate within the, the process. We consider the concentration of these two analytes to be the same throughout the process due to the high velocities in an oxidation ditch, for example, or just the, the nature of a CSTR. Then the, the operation staff plugs in weighting factors for ammonia or nitrate. And then if it's above one, that means that the controller will, will weigh the control process towards that analyte. So for example, if the, the uh, weighting factor for ammonia is two, when ammonia starts to trend up towards the set point leaving the, the process, the controller will automatically push more and more air to the blowers to get that, that nitrification process going. If at the same time, for example, the nitrate value is a bit higher than where the desired set point is, because it's weighted towards ammonia, it will still push more DO into the process and still address the ammonia concentration issue first. As soon as that is ramping down and back within the range that the operation staff sets, then the controller will weight back towards nitrate. In this instance, it'll turn down the blowers, have a lower dissolved oxygen concentration, create anoxic zones, et cetera. So the system is a, a fully integrated system that's looking at both these analytes simultaneously while monitoring and um, metering the appropriate amount of energy and dissolved oxygen to the process so that the compliance parameters and effluent standards are met. Okay, so it's always great to hear from the field, so we're going to do that again. And the system you're going to learn about here um, incorporated nitrification module as well as denitrification and SRT. And Paul was intimately involved with this project, so I'm going to turn it back over to him. Hello again. I'd like to talk to you about one of the plants that I worked on, Barstow, California. Barstow is a unique facility designed for 4.5 MGD, average daily flow of about 2.1. They have a population of about 40,000 people out in the middle of the desert, halfway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Their location makes for a unique setup in that their average daily flow during the week is pretty stable. But when everybody goes over to Vegas and then comes back, Sometimes their flow increases significantly, which has caused some challenges in process control and makes for an unstable environment. In addition, the temperature swings from day to night can impact the plant process and have some additional challenges. Currently, we have a nitrification, denitrification, and SRT system operating at Barstow. Well, let's hear from Cody. Let him tell you directly how it's working for them. I'm actually a chief plant operator at the uh, city of Barstow's wastewater treatment facilities, serving a population of around uh, about 35,000. We were just having problems um, with scum issues, over aerating, uh, nitrification issues because of the huge temperature swings. Everybody thinks, oh, it's so hot. Well, in the mornings, um, during the winter time, you can get lows in the teens. Um, 
And then the summer times, it's the complete opposite, you know, 100 and teens. So uh, just that, you know, 100 degree swing between seasons. So operators are wasting um, erratically, you know, based on those, those feelings. So we went to DO control and we, we got some Hawk DO sensors in the very beginning and our minds were kind of blown away with just that, right? You know, uh, realized that we're under aerating and over aerating and kind of everything in between. And, and from that moment, um, just realized like technology can be your greatest ally, right? And, and it's picking up data and just realized, man, we're not doing half of a good enough job, you know, as what we could be doing. So we, uh, 2015, we installed uh, a couple more sensors. Um, we wanted to see what our ammonia was doing, how the nitrification process was happening, uh, installed uh, some nitrate probes, and, and we're watching where a denitrification facility as well. So just kind of, and, and every time we installed a probe, we went, wow, what else are we not doing, right? Um, and so the, the technology piece was just, um, I, I was in, I was hooked from from the beginning. We we did nitrification first, and then once that was established and everything was running appropriately, then we went into denitrification, and then last we went into SRT. We we knew that we could pick up the phone and get that customer service. We we you know have years of of trusting. Um, we knew the product could last uh, and take the the Mojave Desert because it's uh, it's pretty. Um, aggressive you know we were looking for you know energy efficiency on our blowers and just stability through treatment um, but our SVI dropped our effluent suspended solids dropped scum on the clarifiers and odors that come with that scum went away I mean it, it just overall um, helped the the biological process total nitrogen numbers almost cut in half. I mean, um, yeah, so I mean, it was just kind of a win-win, a you know? Uh, and we were able to save, I think, about 12,000 kilowatt hours a month. So, and we're saving money. So, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge success on our end. I mean, we're, we're doing everything better and, and it's costing us less on the back end. So, yeah, it, it's good, it's real good. One thing that Barstow got, received, was uh, grants and rebates from Southern Cal Edison. Linkus Energy did the review prior to the in implementation of the system. They did the review afterwards and proved uh, that average DOs were reduced from 1.8 to 1.2. They saved $17,800 in energy. It wasn't estimated. It was proven. They measured it with a with a device that measures like kilowatt hours. They have 24 vis 24 seven visibility of their ammonia loads and process performance. They significantly reduced their effluent ammonia spikes. Uh, another added benefit was the denitrification system. We had an added benefit of a power cost reduction of over $13,000 that was measured by the Linkus team. That wasn't the intent of the denit system. They intended to put that in so they could control their nitrates leaving the plant. But by modulating that IRC pump, they actually measured a $13,000 a year savings. Their average effluent nit nit nitrogen went down to 5.5 milligrams per liter in 2019. They also have 24 hour, seven day a week visibility of nitrates and, and nitrogen leaving the plant and entering the plant gives them great trending and ability. They also use the Hawk SRT system, which fundamentally stabilized and changed the way the plant operates. In past years, they had annual upsets during the, during the seasonal change. The Hawk SRT system virtually eliminated those upsets. Overall, Cody Tompkins, chief plant operator at Barstow is thrilled, very happy with the system, with Hawk's instrument support, technical support. We've helped them turn their plant around and, and become much more efficient and predictable. They sleep better at night, knowing that they're meeting their permits, shifting work duties from mundane sampling and testing to analyzing data. I'd like to hand it off to Andy Logan again to talk about more Claro's process management systems. Thank you. Okay, so this presentation is focused largely on 
nitrification and denitrification, as well as SRT. But we have a variety of control systems that we'd like you to be aware of, including BOD and COD removal, dissolved oxygen control, MOV, chemical precipitation of phosphorus, multiple solids handling solutions, as well as disinfection solutions, uh, including chlorination and dechlorination systems for wastewater treatment plants. So if you're interested in any of these other control systems, have questions for how we might configure it to customize it to your plant, or have suggestions for um, additional solutions in the future, please give us a call. We'll be happy to talk with you about it. So another benefit that Hawk offers that I want to emphasize is the Hawk support. I was a customer of Hawks for 20 years in wastewater process, and I used and abused Hawk instruments. And I came to rely on the, the competent technical support that I could always get by calling Hawk. So as part of the service that Hawk provides, you're going to have a dedicated Hawk support team available to consult. It'll be a field specialist like myself or Paul or Mark, or it'll be back office support um, that will be able to help you optimize and configure your control system to optimize it for your solution, for your plant. During this process, you'll have free flow of information from Hawk technical support, and they'll be providing weekly and then monthly reports after the, um, after the optimization period. And this will give you the assurance that your system's running the way it's designed, the way that you want it to. And, it, and you know, we'll let Dustin from Antica speak again here, but he provides a really nice example of a situation where there was a, an excursion event in his plant, Hawk noticed it remotely and then reached out to him to help him address it before it became a problem. So one of the benefits to this system is there's eyes on it continuously. Um, we saw that one day where we had an integrator that actually took the point out of our SCADA and out of the PLC. Um, we received a phone call from Colorado within a half an hour. We didn't even know the probe was down. So it was really reassuring that there was someone there to be able to handle the problem. Uh, we will be continuing to pay for that service yearly. It's invaluable to have an additional set of eyes, basically an operator sitting there watching to make sure that everything is running the way it's supposed to be at all times. So how do you get started in developing a Claris process management system for your utility? The first step will be to work with a dedicated Hawk representative, a sales manager, and a process management specialist to explain to them your process, your plant, your challenges, as well as your needs. Once we have that understanding, then we go into in-depth project planning together. And we love to bring in third-party partners, such as engineers, consultants, and other groups that add value to the total process. We want to partner with you and with these other third-party entities to, to realize the maximum value for your process management system. Next, we'll incorporate all of these details into a proposal with technical recommendations as well as pricing, and then work with you to help you understand that proposal, all that it's included, and wait for, for approval on it. Once we get the, the PO, we'll pull the instrumentation into our Loveland headquarters, do the programming, and then ship it out to you for installation. We'll be working with our project management team who will help you land the wires and, and explain the installation process. And once that's completed, that project management team will turn it over to our commissioning and optimization team. So we have a dedicated RTC tech support group that will work with you to optimize that system, to plug in the parameters that allow that process control system to meet your targets, to train you on how to interface with the HMI and the, the, the hardware. And then they'll be providing that ongoing support. So during optimization, you'll get weekly reports. After that, you'll get monthly reports. But you'll always have um, access to a real human. One of three people will know you, know your equipment, know your utility. And they'll, you can pick up the phone and call them. And they will be able to help you with any detail that you need to have covered. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Mark, and he can wrap us up. Thanks, Andy and Paul. We at Hawk are passionate about protecting environments across the globe, and we've proven our capabilities over and over. Puget Sound needs our attention, and we look forward to working with you at your plant. I have Paul, Andy, and a great team at Hawk behind me to help understand 
how we might be able to help you optimize and be ready for when the permit changes arrive. For more information, please fill out the contact form included on this webpage. On behalf of Andy, Paul, and myself, thank you for viewing this presentation. I look forward to speaking with you and hopefully meeting in person real soon.